Welcome to today's tutorial on curvature. Today I'm going to show you how to derive the formula you can see on the screen there now. Alright, if I take any curve, choose two points between it, P1 and P2, uh, delta S is the change in arc length, and delta theta is the change in angle of the tangent vectors there, look. Okay, so i just formalise that there. This is the arc length. This is the angle change of the tangent. All right, now I can say K, the curvature, is the change in theta over the change in arc length. All right, and as the limit of theta comes to zero, I can rewrite that as D theta over DS, angle over arc length. When using a bit of chain rule, I can write that as D theta over DX, multiplied by dx over the arc length. Now if I look at theta 1, this is the opposite side, that would be dy. Yeah, for this tangent here, the tangent by this uh, line that gives theta 1, that's dy, this side's dx. So the tangent of theta 1 will be opposite over adjacent. So I could say tangent of theta 1, you know, at point 1, Tangent of theta 1 is opposite over adjacent, which is dy over dx. Therefore, theta equals the arctan of dy dx. Okay. And I have to look this up, but the formula for differentiating uh, the arctan of dy dx is this. Okay. Arctan u. I have to do that, right? So what I need to do is substitute dy dx wherever there's a u. So I'm going to differentiate this, okay? Differentiate theta with respect to x. It's this, theta equals that. Which gives me this, the derivative of a derivative is d squared y dx squared over that. And we come to this. And that's our first bit done. What we found there is we found d theta over dx. All right, so we've done the first bit. Now we need to find dx over ds. Right, dx over ds, it's the same as 1 over ds over dx. Okay, happy with that. This, this is better because we can now differentiate the, uh, the arc length with respect to x. Right, and if you can imagine a tiny little increase in x, uh, the arc length will travel up the arc by a tiny little amount that'll for all intents and purposes at these infinitesimally small distances I'm talking about these tiny changes ds will be a straight line uh, so I can use a bit of Pythagoras theory for this and say ds equals the square root of that squared plus that squared which is this now that's good what I'm trying to get here is ds over dx right now if I square both sides I get ds squared and the square root moves from here, which is that. Now I'm going to divide every term by dx squared. That term becomes a 1. And then I'm going to square root both sides. So I end up with this, dx over ds, ds over dx equals this, which is lovely. So I just worked out ds over dx, but what I really want is dx over ds. Turn that upside down and do the old one over job. And uh, I end up with this, alright? So I found my dx by ds now. So I've got k equals d theta by ds. Use the chain rule. Now I've just worked out them two bits. So let's see what they are. It's this. This is my d theta by dx. This is my dx by ds. Alright, I'll just multiply them together. Yeah, the tops just become this and the bottom if you think of this stuff here I've got a load of stuff multiplied by the square root of a load of stuff well, that's going to be a load of stuff to the power one and a half and that's exactly what I get here this is the formula for curvature right it's the second derivative over one plus the derivative squared all of that to the power 3 over 2. Or if you want it in the function notation, it's f, f double prime of x 
over 1 plus f prime of x squared then the whole thing to the power 3 over 2. Just to check this out I'm going to do an example and I'm going to have a function of the sine of x. Now f prime of x is cos x f double prime of x is minus sine x and I want to find the curvature of that function when x is pi over 6 right so put all my values in put my calculator on radians work this out and I end up with a value um, yeah I'm going to get rid of that negative because I'm just going to say the curve is positive okay even though well, I'm not going to explain that but I get a half over that and I end up with a curve of 0 0.2 and if you think about a sine wave if you think about a sine wave it's most curved there down here it's almost a straight line you know down by the at that point there but it really is a straight line so I'd expect a low number for the curvature and I get a number of 0 0.2 which would indicate low curvature at that point uh, x is pi over 6 radians so that looks like a good uh, good way to check the formulas work out alright